Typically, when Intel or AMD launch their new lineup of CPUs, they start with the higher end chips followed by mid range and budget CPUs later. Unlike the earlier Ryzen generations, AMD does not have any CPU in the Zen 4 family that costs less than $200, and the slowest Ryzen 7000 CPU you can find is the Ryzen 7600, which usually costs $220. However, if you remember a while back, a new Ryzen chip called the 7500F was rumored to launch this week, and it is the only Ryzen 7000 chip that comes without any integrated graphics. This report originally came from Tom's hardware and according to Tom's, it was only China exclusive. But the latest reviews for this CPU just proved otherwise. Not only this CPU has been launched officially out of China, but we also got some reviews from the Asian region. According to one of the reviewers, even though it is currently limited to a few countries, it is going to hit the market worldwide in the near future. So the original report from Tom's was inaccurate, but let's see how the Ryzen 7500F stands against the already existing Ryzen 7000 processors as well as its competitors from the blue team. Currently we have three different sites that reviewed this processor and the first one here is Expressview that benchmarked the 7500F against the core i5-13490F. The i5-13490F is China exclusive and not only it boasts higher clock speeds than the i5-13400F but also brings more L3 cache. When we consider the performance in CPU intensive applications, the i5 outperforms the 7500F due to having significantly more cores and threads. But when we talk about gaming performance, the 7500F is simply too much for the i5. In around 10 games, benchmarked at 1080p resolution, the 7500F came out to be 10-15% to faster regardless of the game and got another 1-2% to performance boost with PBO. In esports and non-intensive titles, the performance gap increased even more with some games reaching as high as 20% more FPS with the 7500F. Now moving on to the second website which is My Drivers, the 7500F was benchmarked against the i5-13400 and other higher-end CPUs. Here the 7500F easily annihilated the 13400 in almost every title with significantly better performance, even though it easily lost to the 13600K in most games. However, once the CPU was overclocked to 5.6 GHz, things came out to be pretty different. Now the 7500F was able to beat the i5-13600K or was at least able to match its performance in most titles. As far as productivity goes, the i5-13400F was only a little ahead of the 7500F even though it has more cores and threads. That could be due to its lower frequency and smaller cache size compared to the 13490F which was easily dismantling the 7500F in CPU intensive loads. And now considering the third review from Quasar Zone, we have similar results where the 7500F was around 14% faster on an average compared to the i5-13400 in a total of 10 games where some games would see as high as 33% higher performance with the AMD CPU. The results were also similar when the 7500F was compared against the i5-13500 but here the performance difference was just under 10% in favor of the 7500F. And if we compare it to its bigger brother the 7600, it is roughly 2.6% slower on an average. So we can conclude that the 7500F is faster than the i5-13400, 13500 as well as the 13490F as per these benchmarks. But the important question to ask is what is its price? As per the previous leaks, it was expected to cost $210, which is $10 lower than the current MSRP of Ryzen 7600, which I thought was pretty bad considering that the 7600 has an iGPU. But fortunately, this was a wrong speculation as AMD has decided to launch it for $179. This means that if we go by the price to performance ratio in gaming, the 7500F is a much better choice over the 7600, 7600X, 5800X 3D and the logged Intel Core i5s from the 13th generation. However, when we take productivity into account, the Core i5s are simply a better choice. One more thing here to note is that even though the 7600 is pretty awesome for gaming, it isn't more efficient than the Core i5s. In rendering, it does provide more efficiency than the i5-12400 and 13500, but in gaming, the total power consumption is 20 to 30 watts higher. This isn't a big of a concern but still needs to be taken into account. In conclusion, I feel that the Ryzen 7500F is the way to go if you are building a mid-range gaming build for like $700 to $1200 where you can get a budget B650 motherboard, 16GB of memory and a GPU like RX 7600 if you want to max out games at 1080p or an RTX 4070 for 1440p gaming. Currently, the B650 motherboards are much costlier than they should be but this motherboard from ASRock is at just $125 on Newegg, so it would be quite helpful if you want to cut down on the cost. Another great deal if you would like to claim is the Ryzen 7600 which is right now available for just $200 on Amazon. And if you want to buy these products, I will have my affiliate links in the description which won't cost you an extra penny but would provide me a small commission that will support this channel.
And lastly, before you go, I would like to highlight that the M5 platform has just got a recent Agesa BIOS update with firmware 107B that now supports DDR5 memory frequency of up to 8000 MHz out of the box. This has been one of the major issues for AMD since the launch of AM5, but thankfully it has now been resolved. Not only that, but some overclockers were able to surpass this clock frequency, where one guy with the username HiCookie was able to push an 8400 MHz memory to more than 9000 MHz with even better timings. It's over 9,000! Now, if you are wondering if this will result in a better gaming performance, then the answer is no. Recently, Quasar Zone conducted a test where he compared a 6200 MHz memory kit to the one clocked at 7400 MHz. The difference in gaming was negligible and this is most likely to happen when the games are run on memories that are clocked at 8000 MHz or even higher. Still, higher memory clocks will benefit memory intensive applications, which is a plus for AMD users. And this has been also confirmed by AMD's vice president recently. Watch this video right here to know why AMD thinks that increasing the core count won't do much to the performance. Lastly, let me know your thoughts about the Ryzen 7500F and if you think it is worth buying over the more expensive CPUs. Hit the like button if you found the video informative and subscribe for more videos like this. Make sure to turn on the notifications to never miss the future uploads and I will see you in the next one.